Welcome to another episode of Happy Whole Life Podcast. As always, I invite you to take a breath, take a moment to connect to yourself, to connect to your body. I always code these episodes with the intention that as you listen to my voice, it supports you in deepening into your own deepening into your own self-expression, your own connection to your truth. It is such a delight to be here with you today. And if you are new to my world, my name is Michelle and I work in the realms of sensual dance and self-expression, specifically the throat and womb connection, really helping you to ah, unveil the depth of your power that lives in your womb, in your root, in your sacral, in your solar plexus, allowing that power to rise up into your heart, your higher heart, spreading your wings, opening your voice. And I'm so excited for today's episode because our theme that we're moving with is the song of the uncaged bird and what it looks like to unveil your voice, dissolve the veils over your voice and really, really claim this is who I am. This is my magic in the world. This is what I came for. And really first and foremost, turning that love, that light, that power, that presence into yourself, into your own heart. And even in this moment, if it feels good, if you have the availability to soften your gaze or close your eyes, Just take this one moment, make it sacred. Take a breath in, exhale, sigh it out. Even just right now, connecting to the power, the potency that lives in the sound of your voice, in that vibration of your vocal cords. And you'll hear me talk about this a lot, but even just the act of singing, humming, whether it's just... Letting ourselves be in connection to our voice is so healing. One, because the sound of our own voice is the most healing thing for our own bodies, but two, because we're activating the muscles at the back of our throat that communicate with our vagus nerve. And when those vibrations are happening, it sends the signal to our body that we're safe. So with our theme today, the song of the uncaged bird, I invite you to You can take that quite literally and can you practice being in relationship with the sound of your own voice on a daily basis? Hum, sing, (laughs) get on live and speak, talk to people, share your gifts, share your voice, share your medicine. But again, always remembering that you get to be the first recipient of your own siren song. You get to be the first recipient of the gift of your own voice. Hmm. And with that, if you are drawn to my work, then it is very likely that you are a leader. (laughs) And when I say very likely, I mean you are a leader. (sighs) I work with leaders in the realms of dissolving those veils over your voice and really rooting into your power, planting your roots into the earth so that your backbone of ruthless self-love is strong, so that your spine is straight. There are no gaps, right? Because you might also hear me talk about a lot my experience with autoimmune disease. And if you're new to my world, you might not know that story, but I used to experience autoimmune disease and it was really devastating and really terrifying and made me feel so disconnected from myself and even when I look back at what was the root cause of disease in my body it was separation from self it was there were these places that I was hiding from myself parts of myself that I had locked away and tucked away because they were not good enough to be seen because they were too much they were too vibrant they were too shiny something bad would happen to me as a result of me being in my full radiance being in my full power Right, but it was that space of separation that allowed this ease to come in. And I think of it the same way when your spine is not straight, when you're not holding yourself like the powerful leader that you are, that's when there's space for things to start to come in, like dark energies that have no place in your field or the criticisms and judgments of people in the online realms or in your real life where, ugh, what really has absolutely nothing to do with you all of a sudden you're taking it personally and that person's criticism or judgment 
it starts to shut you down and you start to shrink and you start to hide and again if you're listening to this podcast <laughs> what i know to be true is you are a leader <sighs> and i know this from my own experience that when you are meant to lead there are parts of your soul that are going to feel dead that are going to feel so contracted that are going to feel anxious because you are not embodying your soul work right versus when you can open your heart and open and expand the depths of your voice and you really start to embody your soul work in the fullest way that you can with your whole heart it's like an artist who sees all these visions all the time of what they desire to create and what is meant to be birthed through them and instead of picking up their paintbrush and allowing themselves to paint and play they tuck it all away and hide it all away but mm, no you are meant to be a stream you are meant to translate for the divine you are meant to allow your art to flow through you in whatever way it wants to flow through you whether that's a podcast or your soul work leading ceremonies or dance or you know my case for example eft tapping whatever it is for you you're meant to be embodied in your soul work when we think about this theme of the caged bird and even connecting to yourself for a moment and reflecting upon perhaps there have been moments in your life or times in your life where you have felt like there's a cage around your throat and it's been interesting for me i've been working and supporting clients in the realms of self-expression for years now and i cannot count the number of times i have heard that visceral experience described by my clients or the women in my community that it feels like there's bars around my throat. It feels like there's a cage around my throat. It feels like there's something constricting my throat, strangling my voice, right? Like sometimes the suppression of our voice can feel so viscerally intense and really reflecting upon how did we get there? How did we stifle our voice to this degree to the point where it feels like there's a cage around us? And for so many of us, whether it was when we were younger at some point, oftentimes it's periodically throughout different points of your life, different seasons of your life when perhaps you expressed yourself and you let your voice be heard and somebody smacked you down, right? Somebody told you like, that is too much. That's not acceptable. No, we won't be having that here, right? Or perhaps at one point you used your voice, you expressed yourself freely and fully because that's all you knew how to do at that time in your life. Nobody had made you fit into whatever box they thought to be appropriate at that time. But as we start to collect evidence in these moments that, oh, it's not safe for me to be expressed. I'm going to be in danger if I dare to express myself. Something bad is going to happen to me if I dare to express myself. Then yeah, those younger versions of us are going to start to contract they're going to start to hide they're going to start to put up those cages around your throat to protect yourself from those bad things happening to you again and even as i was speaking i remember this memory came up and as, as i've been on my own self-expression journey it just came through again now i was in elementary school and i was quite i was quite shy and reserved already because i felt very out of place as a half Korean girl in a predominantly white society around me. And I already felt those threads of I'm different and people point out that I'm different and people point out that I don't belong. And I remember I was in class, I can't remember what grade I was in, but I was creating art on we all had these like little mini chalkboards and I was creating my art. I don't even remember what art I created. Maybe I drew a flower with chalk, I don't remember, but I remember this girl came up to my board and she erased it and a little me was fucking pissed <laughs> i was i was angry i was upset because i just poured my heart into creating this art and this girl just came up and erased it for no reason she had her own board why couldn't she use her own board <laughs> right that's what was running through little me's mind at the time and i remember i i yelled at her i said like stop it i raised my voice at her which was quite out of character for this like shy, quiet girl that I had 
become right this shell of my true essence which <laughs> i'm not shy <laughs> and i'm not quiet <laughs> gentle yes but shy and quiet mm -mm. But I remember we had a substitute teacher on that day and the substitute teacher came over and she yelled at me and she reprimanded me and she said, you're going to get detention at recess because you raised your voice. You screamed at your center and that's not allowed. And <laughs> I never realized until I was healing autoimmune disease how much that memory made me feel so small and so unsafe to be expressed in my art and in my voice because I felt so humiliated because the teacher made this whole big thing about it and I felt so embarrassed and I felt so small. And <sighs> the last piece of this story that I'll share before moving on to my next point is I was so scared of authority figures. I was so scared of being an imperfect student, right? I took so much pride in this Korean girl work ethic where I'm gonna get straight A's, check pluses, whatever it is, I'm gonna be the perfect model student that in order to try to maintain that perfect model student persona i was even willing to go so far as to abandon myself in the process and what that looked like at the time was later in class uh, after all of that had ended before we had recess i remember i raised my hand and i said to the teacher i'm sorry for screaming in my center even though i wasn't sorry I wasn't sorry one bit, <laughs> but I said, I'm sorry for screaming in my center. And I said it so quietly that she couldn't even hear me. And this nice kid that sat next to me, he repeated it loudly so that I didn't have to. And I, I still remember that kid. I know his name and hmm, beams of gratitude because I wasn't available to use the full volume of my voice at that time, but there was someone that was willing to Mm, carry my voice for me when I didn't have the courage and at the same time I can hold the gratitude for that moment and also recognize that I was abandoning myself in an effort to be this perfect student right I was apologizing for something when I didn't believe that I did anything wrong at all but again that was a moment when I abandoned myself and that moment really it stuck with me and sometimes when we think about what causes us to suppress our voices and our expression, sometimes it might be some a really traumatic event that has happened to you, right? And I've spoken about some of the things that have happened to me in my journey in my life in the realms of feeling safe in my body and my radiance and my sexuality. But in this case, it was this seemingly small moment, right? But holding so much love and compassion for those versions of us that at some point put ourselves in the cage, because we wanted to maintain love. And in that case, for me, I was scared I was gonna lose love if my parents found out that I got detention at recess for screaming at my center. <sighs> for so many spiritual women, right? We carry that really deep fear of, if I express myself, I might very well be in physical danger. And that's because for spiritual women, right? Cancel culture used to be death. That's how visceral that fear can feel in our body, right? That in a past life, perhaps you used your magic to its fullest power. You allowed your radiance to be felt. You put yourself out there bravely and courageously and even lost your life as a result of it, right? And so having deep reverence and deep honor for the parts of you that are afraid for good reason, right? And coming into this present moment, coming into coherence with your soul right here, right now, that I've got myself. And that's why you'll hear me, you'll hear me talk about that backbone of self-love, of ruthless self-love. When you've got your roots planted, when you are connected to the power that lives in your hips, in your womb, in your root, right? When I say your root, I mean your connection to the earth, your connection to your ancestors, your connection to the divine, when you feel all of that support around you pulsing through you all the time every day, <laughs> your natural self-expression is going to come alive. It is going to come through because you feel safe. You feel whole and complete as you are. And that's why you'll hear me talk about dance all the time. Dance is just a remembrance of your wholeness, of the <sighs> perfect, divine, complete nature that you are. 
<sighs> I can speak from my own journey that a second thing to consider when we talk about the song of the uncaged bird, right? This first part being <sighs> this fear of being in danger. So it feels like, okay, the cage is a safer place to be. So I'm just going to stay here. But the second thing is sometimes when we think about, okay, if I uncage my voice, if I untether my self-expression, if I allow my wildness to roar, it feels like there is this kind of power and responsibility that we can be afraid to wield. And this is when it comes down to what is your relationship with power? What is your relationship with responsibility? Because when you're the uncaged bird and you're up in the sky and you are soaring, because let me be clear, that is where you belong. You do not belong locked in some cage in some basement collecting dust. Mm -mm. I'm thinking of my beautiful friend Lopa right now. It's like, <laughs> you are a jewel. You are a diamond in this world. You belong <laughs> in the freaking sky, just soaring, right? But, but from that high place up in the sky, comes responsibility, comes visibility, right? And ah, when I think about my own journey with my self-expression for a long time, I was so afraid to claim my gifts, my gifts, one of them being the vehicle of my voice and translating for the divine and channeling, right? I was so scared to own that because it's like, wait, that feels, that feels really powerful. And I don't know if that power is for me. Maybe I'll just leave that to somebody else. But here's the thing. There's nobody else for the job. There is nobody else for the job. <laughs> like, I'm just going to be so honest. There's nobody else for the job. There's nobody with your unique gifts. There's nobody with your unique voice. There is nobody on this planet, <laughs> on any other planet, that holds the depth of love and connection and fire and grace and elegance that you carry and sometimes that can feel really fucking overwhelming and really fucking scary right and again i know for me and my journey with my self-expression for a long time i knew i was powerful i knew it i knew it in my bones i knew it in my blood i knew it in my energy i felt it but i was so scared to admit it like let alone not even thinking about being seen in my power by the world, but I was scared to be seen in my power by me because I'd gotten so comfortable and adjusted to being this like, okay, I'm shy and, and I'm quiet and you know I don't, I don't ruffle feathers, I don't rock the boat when <laughs> part of my soul destiny is to be a disruptor. I'm here to disrupt. I'm here to disrupt patterns. I'm here to disrupt powers at B. I'm here to disrupt with my dance. And you'll hear me say that a lot. Dance is disruptive. Dance is a disruptive force in this world. All right, and dance is disruptive because, especially when we talk about women connecting to the power of our hips and our wounds and really planting our roots. For women, that power from our root, our sacral, our solar plexus that rises up into our self-expression, our voice, our angel wings, getting their full time to soar and just be unfurled right from that place. And I've, I just lost my train of thought <laughs> dancing to angel wings. But all of this to say is allowing yourself to trust in your ability to hold your power this power that you hold is safe in your hands. The responsibility of being the leader of your soul mission. You've got everything that you need. You have everything that you need. And considering for yourself what gets to shift so you deeply believe that, so you deeply know that in every cell of your being. Right? Because from these roots and these flowers i'm just visualizing this garden of your own ruthless self-love <sighs> those pieces of shame those pieces of fear that may have been instilled in you that shame that fear dies in the presence of your own unconditional love <sighs> and so i invite you today even in this moment consider 
What does it look like to love myself with a reckless abandon? What does it look like to just deeply own and accept all of who I am <laughs> with such ferocity <laughs> that no one can touch me unless you invite them in, right? And the last thing I'll say on this point is so often for many of us who have experienced that threads of perfectionism and wanting to get it right there can also be this fear of well if i stay here in my cage then at least everything is predictable and i know things are how, how how things are going to unfold versus if i dare to spread my wings fly into the sky what if i fail <laughs> what if my wings get clipped from under me in the sky and i fall and i fail and what if it's embarrassing? And what if people, again, what if other people judge me? What if I disappoint myself? <sighs> and what I'll say about that is, you know, you can even think about the experience of declaring your desires out loud. And then even consider at times in your life, have there been moments where you're like, oh, like I want this, I deeply desire this thing, this outcome, this experience, whatever it might be, I want it so bad. I deeply desire it and having that fear in your heart of like, ooh, like, I don't want to say it out loud because what if it doesn't happen and I'm disappointed, right? What if it doesn't happen and it's awkward and it's embarrassing? So better to just keep my desires like locked away somewhere in here such that I can prevent that feeling of disappointment. And I'm here to remind you that you are strong enough to be in relationship with the feeling, the sensations that arise as a result of being disappointed. You have everything you need to navigate the feeling of disappointment, right? And really even like zooming up and out of your timeline, a moment of disappointment when you felt like, oh, like I went there and I failed. I tried and I fell on my fucking face and I'm so embarrassed, I'm humiliated. One, remembering you've got yourself. You've got yourself and you are powerful. You can be in relationship with the sensation of being disappointed, but what you cannot be in relationship with in this lifetime is walking away from your own gifts, is walking away from your own heart, is walking away from your truest expression. Maybe because I so deeply believe and have experienced this in the depths of my own being that <sighs> life becomes so much more colorful you experience your life in so much more vivid color when your fullest expression is alive, right? When you knock on the doors of your heart space and you whisper to the parts of yourself that have been sleeping that, hey, it's time to wake up now. It's safe to wake up now. It's safe to come alive now. I need you to wake up now. And sending so much love to those parts of yourself that you once abandoned or rejected or cast aside or shoved into some dark box somewhere and locked them up, right? And saying, I love you. I'm sorry. I see you. I've got you. It's your time to shine now, right? <laughs> and when we talk about these things, the last thing that I want to say, and oh, actually a story is coming into my mind if you don't know, I love birds. I love birds with my whole soul, with my whole being. Birds are, <laughs> they've just been such a big part of my life for such a long time. Even when I say the phrase soul per, like following your soul per expression, collecting those soul per moments throughout your day, like what is that that makes your soul per? It's because my bird bow growing up, anytime he would eat something delicious or hmm, just feel delighted about something in his life, whether it was like a little pat on the head, he'd always go per. <laughs> and that was his noise of delight and pleasure. But when we think about the cages, right? When we think about how the cage got there in the first place and the temptation to stay in those boxes, to stay in that cage. I'll give the example of growing up, wasn't my bird bow, but a different bird that we had that must have had some traumatic experiences in its life because he was really afraid and really scared to come out of the cage when we got him. For, I was really young, but it must have been months. This bird barely left the cage unless 
my dad would go in and, and bring him out. And my dad has such like a beautiful, a gentle, caring presence that a lot of times animals really trust him. But I remember for the longest time, this bird would not leave the cage. And I remember feeling really sad about it because I just wanted to play with this bird. I wanted to sing with this bird. I wanted to have a connection with this bird, but I was patient and I waited and I built trust with this bird, right? I spent time building trust, deepening into love, establishing that connection and that relationship such that at some point, eventually, this bird felt safe to get onto my hand and leave the cage. And it's just bringing that analogy to your own life that our journey is with our self-expression. It's not a race to become the boldest, most loud version of yourself, right? And even taking a step back from that and discerning what are you making your fullest expression mean? Are you attaching any certain way that it's supposed to look, that you need to be bold, that you need to express yourself in a certain way in order for you to feel like you're in your fullest self-expression when it could very well be that maybe on the internet you're like the sassiest bitch in town. <laughs> you have no problem being controversial and sharing your out there opinions and calling people out and you have no problem with that. But perhaps actually the part of your self-expression that has been stuffed down, that has been hiding, that has been eject rejected or abandoned is actually the soft, gentle side of you that you never let see the light of day because the bold, the sassy, the spicy feels safer. It feels safer to be the bold presence in the world because if you were to show the world oh, those like tender, soft parts of you, what if you could take an advantage of or what if something bad happens to that part of you and you feel like you can't protect yourself, right? So I just wanted to go on that little tangent there to say that what part of you that wants to come alive in this season of your self-expression is so beautiful and so worthy of being treasured and I invite you to not rush the process and be willing to take your time the same way if you had a bird you were nursing back to health and feelings of safety and love to finally want to leave its cage sometimes applying that same concept to yourself in your own heart, your own inner child or inner teenager or younger version of you that actually just really, really needs to be held and loved and reminded, you're safe, I've got you, right? And some beautiful practices for that can be EFT tapping, dance, breath, connecting to nature, right? Any of these practices that allow you to connect to yourself. And I'm thinking, when this episode is going to drop, I have a new sensual dance sanctuary space that will be opening soon. And perhaps even by the time this episode is live, <laughs> the doors will be open for pre-sale. But I'll leave the link for that if it is in fact live in the show notes. But this space is going to be all about everything that we've talked about. Connecting to your dance, speaking the language of your hips, planting your roots into the earth, feeling yourself held, supported, and safe strengthening that backbone of ruthless self-love, straightening your spine, allowing that energy between your throat and your womb to travel freely such that your self-expression arises naturally, that your true voice leaves your lips every time you open your mouth. All right, and I'm really excited about this space because you'll hear me say it again and again, dance is disruptive in a society that would prefer for women to stay small in a society that would prefer for women to remain forgetful of their power and their genius and their brilliance, right? We get to disrupt that with our dance, with our connection to our sensuality, with our connection to our hips. Mm, and even now, just uh, moving feels so good. <laughs> For those of you that are watching the video, I was like starting to sit down to record this episode and I was like, oh no, I need to stand. I need to, <laughs> I need to be able to move. And so like I said, Central Dance Sanctuary space is coming soon and I will link it in the show notes if it's open by the time this episode gets released. But with that, the third point that I wanted to make is 
<sighs> Again, if you're drawn to my work, it's because you are a leader. And I really want you to hear me when I say that you are a leader. And in leadership, sometimes you are walking in the direction that everybody else is way over here. And you're walking all the way over here, right? And sometimes being a leader means there's absolutely no one that's done it like you before. And you have absolutely no idea what your path is supposed to look like or what the next step will be, right? But when you tune in, when you connect to yourself, when you mm, forge those paths of connection to your intuition with your dance and your movement and your body from that space, you know that most powerful part of you knows the way and it's safe to trust that part of you. And when I talk about dance and when I talk about even about EFT tapping, emotional freedom technique, and if you're not familiar with what that practice is, I invite you to, again, check out the show notes. I have a free resource, EFT Enchantress, that introduces you to EFT tapping and the magic and the power of moving energy in that way and circulating our life force energy in the way that EFT tapping allows us to do. But I, I categorize EFT tapping in the realms of sensual dance because to me it is a dance. EFT tapping feels like translating for the divine and hmm, it's like dissolving any space of separation that might exist between you and yourself through dance, through EFT tapping, through connecting to your breath and nature those spaces start to dissolve such that <sighs> you're inhabiting every inch of your body. You're inhabiting every inch of your self-expression. And again, life is just, mm, it's so colorful and so beautiful and so potent when you are operating from that space. And the last point I wanted to touch on is dismantling those cages around your throat, that armor that you've been wearing around your heart space, whatever it might be that just feels like, ugh, it feels heavy, it feels tight, it feels constraining, right? And even just for a moment right now, if it feels good, if you can close your eyes or soften your gaze or come back to this section when you have the availability to do so, I invite you to just spend a moment meeting yourself. If it feels good, even bringing some of that tapping magic into the room, tapping on your heart space. Just tapping and meeting your breath. Just taking a moment to scan over your body noticing where are those pockets of tension or tightness where do you feel some sort of constriction or constraints around your liberation maybe it's in your mind there's a lot of heavy dark colors floating around in there or maybe you feel like there's shackles around your throat that have been weighing down your ability to be fully expressed in your voice. Maybe it feels like there's oh, like a heavy weight pressing on your shoulders or maybe there's a sensation of pressure pushing up against your back telling you that you need to move faster, that you need to rush, that you need to be somewhere else other than exactly where you are. Or again, maybe there is an armor around your heart or a sinking feeling in your belly a tightness in your hips. I invite you to just scan over your body for a moment and simply acknowledging if there are any places where there is pain or tension or tightness or constriction. Let's just take a moment to send some love to those places. So you might rub your palms together, creating a little bit of heat, a little bit of friction. And as you spread your palms apart, feeling that energy that you've cultivated and simply placing your hands upon that part of your body that is craving for your touch. And it's safe to trust your body, your intuition, 
What part of you is craving your touch? Can you go to that place? And just sending your loving presence Sending your deep acceptance of yourself to that part of you. I see you. I love you. Thank you. I'm just taking a few cleansing breaths. Exhale, sigh it out, let it go. Good. Whenever you feel ready, just slowly making your way back. <sighs> and sometimes when I do this practice, I also like to ask my body the question, <sighs> do you have any wisdom for me? Do you have a message for me? Our bodies are so, so wise. Our intuition is so, so, so sharp. And when we can practice cultivating these moments of having space to ourselves the more and more we get to be in the space of sharpening those skills sharpening that intuition honing your self-expression and clearing any of those blockages out of the way and the last piece that i want to touch on is oftentimes in our journeys of our self-expression and uncaging our voices sometimes it's true that it was us at some point in our life that put us in that cage. And sometimes that can be hard to be in relationship to recognize like, oh, I put myself here, yes, in an effort to keep myself safe. And I've remained here because I felt comfortable. I've allowed myself to stay here in this small box because I felt comfortable. And sometimes we can experience feelings of anger and self-judgment and self-criticism of like, oh, like, why didn't I move faster? Oh, like, why did I waste all that time playing small? Like, oh, why didn't I do this? Why did I do it this way? And again, like, ah, oh, softening those voices of self-criticism. Like, <laughs> if you've come to any of my ceremonies, you'll know oftentimes I will invite you, like, cleanse your fist and throw it down to the earth. Whatever critical thought is coming up, ah, oh, it's safe to let it go right and start energizing the loving compassionate kind voice that lives within you that loving compassionate voice that is here to guide you on your path but with that being said on the other side of the coin is what about your environment what about the people in your life what about the relationships that you are entertaining right now in this season and the same way you scanned over your own body, seeing like, oh, are there any places of constriction, tension, tightness? It can be so powerful to scan your environment, to scan your relationships and notice. Are any of these environments, are any of these relationships or connections contributing to that same feeling of constriction, tightness, smallness? Because different environments evoke different aspects of us. Different people evoke different aspects of us. And really asking the question, are these environments, are these people, are these relationships evoking my love, my expression, my truth, like just me exactly as I am in my wholeness? Or are these environments, these relationships, these people contributing to that feeling of me being shoved into a box? Right, Because if you're sharing a bed with someone who prefers the smaller version of you, that's not going to work. If you are entertaining sisterhoods or friendships where you feel like it's not safe to be radiant and to shine as bright as you desire because you're scared, oh, they're going to get triggered, oh, they're not going to like it, oh, it's going to be this whole thing and it's going to be hard to navigate, so mm, better for me to just stand back here and be small. No, that's not going to work. Because I have experienced this firsthand that when you are in environments or in relationships where you feel that temptation to be small is being strengthened, mm -mm. what happens as a result of that is your soul dying a slow death, right? And we can't have your soul dying a slow death. We need your soul fully alive. Because that's what you deserve. 
You deserve to feel fully alive in your life. You deserve to experience your life in vivid color. And I say this with so much love and so much compassion because I know that sometimes it fucking hurts to navigate these spaces. I know that it can be so scary when you've been conditioned to fear being abandoned and rejected, when you've been conditioned that I have to be this version of myself, otherwise I'm gonna lose love. But again, if you listen to the past episode, it's really anchoring into this truth that if you're in connection with people who would prefer the smaller version of you, there is no love to lose. Because what you gain in your own self-love and that I imagine it like, oh, you could just like fill up a cup with your own self-nourishing nectar and just like drink it up. And even right now, I'll show you. This is from the Twerking for Self-Expression workshop. This is a bowl of water. This bowl is actually my homilies. And if you're catching the audio and not the video, you can use your imagination here. But this bowl belonged to my homily, my Korean grandmother, and I love using it in my ceremonial spaces. It feels like I'm carrying on her lineage and it feels just so meaningful to me. But inside of this bowl, I have water and I have these rose petals that I picked from my garden. And in the ceremony, we did a practice of speaking intentions into water. And this is some Kuan Yin medicine, the goddess Kuan Yin, mm, of compassion and self-love. And adding this element of earth frequency into this well of water, if you will. And you can even do something similar for yourself. I'm going to gently put this bowl back. But even if that visual helps you to just imagine filling up a vessel with your own self-love, speaking your loving word and intention into this vessel of water, adding rose petals, whatever you want that would make it feel extra luxur luxurious and delicious and beautiful and <sighs> allow yourself to bathe in it. <laughs> like you can even add that to a bath that you run for yourself or you can simply get your glass of water in the morning and just speak love into that glass and visualize as you drink that water, you're coating your inner gardens. You are raining love on your inner gardens. I see you. I've got you. I love you. And really, truly never underestimate the power of creating these environments for yourself that are so nourishing. Because when you are not only creating a nourishing environment in your external world in terms of your physical environment, but also your relationships, your energy, where you're spending your time, and you're spending time cultivating your inner gardens and this inner connection that you have to yourself. <sighs> it's like I could just melt right here and right now. It is so potent and so beautiful. And I'm just going to peek at my notes for a second to see if there was anything, any last things that I wanted to share. Mm. And I'm just tuning into my own heart. That was everything I had on my little bullet points. I don't often make notes or write bullet points for these podcast episodes. In fact, this is the first time I've ever written a few notes, but it's because ah, this download for this episode just like came in blazing hot yesterday when I was at the coffee shop and I was like, okay, I can't record it right now at this very moment, but when I get home, <laughs> it's going down. Mm. As always, I invite you to consider what you would love to celebrate and acknowledge about yourself. And I mentioned the twerking for self-expression workshop, if that's something you're curious about as well. If you feel pulled to the medicine of dance, if when you see other people twerk, you go like, oh, that is beautiful, that is powerful, and I want to experience that for myself, I have a workshop called Twerking for Self-Expression, and we learn the basics of twerk, we drop into a sacred dance ceremony, we cover more in depth that throat and womb connection and i will link that in the show notes as well as the central dance dance sanctuary space that will be opening soon at the time of this recording but those portals for you will be in the show notes so feel free to explore feel free to dm me on instagram and 
Well, like I said, as always, I invite you to consider what you want to celebrate and acknowledge about yourself in this season. Today, as you complete listening to this episode or watching this episode of the podcast, what do you want to celebrate? Feel free to share it in your stories. Tag me so that I can see and celebrate you. It is truly, it is the greatest gift. It is the gift of a lifetime to get to see you and get to celebrate you and I treasure you. Thank you for being here and for listening. Feel free to share any takeaways and DM me. And I will see you in the next episode. Mm -hmm. All the soul purrs.